Okay, good morning, class. Okay, my name is Ananiye J. Caleb, and I'm going to be your facilitator for this course for today. Okay, um, that is ISD 470 e-business. So if you are here and you are doing e-business, then you are the right place. But if you are not here for e-business, then it means please you are the wrong place and you have to find yourself to the right platform. <clears throat> Okay, so today we want to start with um, e-business, ISD 470. And please, let's take note of this. Um, we'll be having e-business for the rest of the day so that um, God willing tomorrow, the other lecturer will take you for the rest of the day. For the, um, he will also take the whole day to handle the other course. I think that, that is... Um, uh, I don't know, is it system analysis? I have to check the course, but we are using the whole uh, today's time for um, e-business, okay? We are using today's time for e-business. Okay, system analysis. So we are doing um, e-business for today and system analysis and design will also take you for the whole of tomorrow. Okay, good. Um, do we have, let me see, how many students are uh, from um, Kumasi, Kumasi people. How many are you here? Just a quick roll call. Kumasi, if you are in Kumasi, just show a thumbs up in the chat menu. Let me see. Okay, 246. And okay, so Kumasi is 246. Okay, Accra, how many are you in Accra? Okay. Okay, that's okay. Kumasi, thank you. Thank you. I just want to know, so the one who is in Technos Park 8P, please, let's be mindful. Of attendance is being taken. And if you just put Techno, whatever, Huawei, and all those kind of names, I'm sorry, you'll be marked absent. So please be very, very, very careful. Make sure you put your full name. Make sure you put your full name over there. Please, um, people from Accra, can, uh, how many are you in Accra Center? Naomi, okay, good. Good, good, okay, 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 okay. Then let me also see those from Tema. I think for Tema people, I've met them before. Tema. Okay, okay, good. And what about, okay, I've seen Tema people over here. What about whole center? We want to make sure everybody, every um, uh, center is represented. Who? Please, is there anybody from who? Okay, Vincent, good. Please, I don't see your people here. Please kindly, if you have a platform, a WhatsApp group, please kindly tell them that we have started, the class has already begun and that they should join us. Okay, okay. Then, um, let me see, let me see. Okay, Boga, I've seen Boga people. Takradi, anybody from Takradi Center? Okay, Tadi, Anita, okay. Okay, Abdul Razak, Isa, I've seen you from Tamale. Please make sure you inform them. We are, we've started already and we are taking attendance. Okay, without wasting much time, let me um, start the class. And please, whilst Koforidia, okay, good, good. Sorry for not mentioning your, your center. Koforidia, yes, I know, I know. Takradi, good. So please, if you don't see your colleagues here, tell them to join because we are starting the class. And those of you who have written just a single name, Chris, David, please indicate your full name it's very important sunyane yes sunyane i'll be i'll be i'll be coming there um that, that will be our next meeting face to face meeting i'll be in sunyane so you will see me there personally okay um that is okay that is okay okay thank you very much thank you thank you thank you all right so let's let's start the class let's start the class Oh, Tamale. Yes, Tamale. I think I mentioned Tamale. So the one who is asking about Tamale, I think I made mention of it. So, um, 
Okay. I'm trying to share my video with you guys, but the system seems to be disturbing me here. Let me see if it will work this time. Um, I've seen some people raised up their hand at the chat, uh, what they call the video section. Please, if you have any question to ask, please kindly type your question in the comment section. Um, Takradi, somebody is asking, when will you come to Takradi? Please, we, you have a, a, what do you call it, a, a coordinator there, okay? So I'm not sure I have to be there myself. Um, all right, okay. So uh, let's see. So those who have raised their hand in the, uh, what do you call it, the section, please kindly make sure you put your hands down. If you have any question to ask, please kindly do it at the, uh, what do you call it, the chat section, uh, uh, the, uh, in the chat. No, somebody is asking, sir, please, does this class include hospitality students? If you are doing e-business, yes, you are part of it. If your course is e-business, this is the class. I think hospitality students should be here. Yeah, I think they, they also do e-business. Okay, so let's start our class. So we want to, as I said, we are starting with e-business, that is ISD 470. And today we want to start with our units. So we have seven units in this course, okay? And what do we expect to achieve at the end of this course? So by the time we are done today, we will be looking at e-business in a broad sense, what it means, okay? When we say e-business, want to look at what it means in, 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 in general. Then also we're looking at the fundamentals of e-business. So e-business refers to the transformation of key business process, which we'll be looking at it in details. Okay, now let me say this, that whenever you hear people talk about things like um, let me use this blank sheet to uh, explain something here. Um, okay, so whenever you hear people, um, things like e um, email, you hear we talk about email, e-business, You hear us talk about e-business, e-procurement. E-logistics. So whenever you hear us use the word the letter E in front of any IT related issue then we are referring to electronic, okay? We are referring to electronic version of it. So let me dwell my attention or let me make my reference to um, email, for instance. You see, those of us who are a little bit old, okay, who have lived a little bit time, okay? Not the Indomie generation. <laughs> Somebody say e e yes, e -levy. <laughs> I wanted to avoid that, but anyway, if somebody has typed it over there, then E-Levy is also part of it. All right. So, gone are the days where we used to write something we call um, pen pals, okay? We used to write send uh, um, letters to the whites claiming that sometimes we tell them we don't have a bible we don't have this we don't have that 
and we plead with them to help us get some and they bring us. Sometimes it takes a maximum, sometimes before your letter moves from Ghana here to uh, the white man out there, let me give you a simple scenario. I'm using the email to explain something here. So let's pay attention and let's see how best we can explain things over here. See, I'm in Kumasi, so let me use um, uh, um, Kumasi as an example. So I'm in Kumasi here, okay? And I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to send a letter to a white man out there, okay? So, being in Kumasi, when I write a letter, maybe from KNUST campus. So when I write any letter, ideally I'll take it to the KNUST post for them to help me send the letter across. So, so Kumasi, oh, let me reduce my pen. Um, so Kumasi here, and I I post it at KNUST post office. So assuming I, I, I go there and post the letter. Oh, somebody saying your network. Please, is it okay? Or it's coming from the person's end. Please, is, is it okay? Somebody is saying, please, your network. I am monitoring it here and I'm, I don't see anything wrong with the network. So um, class, if you have any... Uh, please confirm. Well, forget about my video. My video, I think I have a problem with the, the webcam that I'm using, but can you hear me? Forget about my video. Okay, okay. So um, forget about my video. Like the video, the webcam I'm using, it's having a problem. So... Um, let's just do it without the video. So what I was saying earlier on is that, assuming I am in Kumasi, I'm trying to explain the email system, how it used to work, okay? So assuming, so assuming I'm in Kumasi here and I'm posting a letter. Okay, so assuming I'm in Kumasi here and I try to send a letter, okay? So I go and post it on Monday morning. So I post it on Monday morning. So whilst I post the letter on Monday morning, you know, usually the post office usually um, they send letters away on Fridays. So I post the letter on Monday morning and the letter will sit in the post office box from Monday up to Friday. So we are talking about, let's say like five days. Okay. They are talking, we are talking about five days. When the letter leaves the KNUST office, you see, Ghana Post will have to consolidate all the letters that have been sent within the, 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 the week and make sure they, they send it to the appropriate quarters. So assuming the letter has to leave the KJC Post, let's say the regional post, let's say Edum, Edum Post Office. So the letter will go there. They will now sort all those letters that are supposed to go to uh, outside the country. And that will, might also take another three days or four days. When the letter gets to Accra, okay, now they just sort it out and realize that, okay, this letter has to go to, let's say, the United States. And they'll consolidate or they'll put all the letters that are supposed to go to the United States together. And it will get there. And this should take at least five days here. Now, when it gets to the United States, assuming it gets to... Um, 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 JFK, okay? Now, you see, United States is also a very big place. When it gets to whichever state the letter gets to, they need to send it to whichever, uh, um, the state that the letter is intended to go. Then when it gets, or when it also gets there, they also have subdivisions or regions like what we have here, regions, okay? The letter has to go to the region. And from the region, it has to go to the 
uh, the, the municipals and it goes all the way to, you know, they do delivery to the various homes of the people. So from a letter that I posted from Kumasi, by the time the letter gets to the final destination, we are talking about not less than 40 to 50 days. Okay. We are talking about not less than 40 to 50 days. And if you are to send or post a letter that will take you 40 to 50 days, then what it means is that if the person wants to also reply, it has to go through the same process, which will also take another 40 to 50 days. Now, so if one letter that we have to send, let's stick with the 40 days. One letter that we have to send, will have to take for, uh, uh, um, 80 days before it gets to the final destination. Now, the question is, if it is an emergency, assuming you are sending a letter to a family member out there and it's an emergency and you need to hear from the person as early as possible and it has to take 80 days before the letter gets there, you, you, you can imagine how frustrating this can be. So the same way we send a letter through this uh, system, then we have, the, the, uh, we have a new system which is called the electronic mail service. Okay, so instead of sending a, a mail or a letter that will take 40 days, the same thing happens when you are trying to send um, an email. But this time, because it's an electronic version of the mail system, you send an email. It goes through several servers. Okay, it goes through a lot of servers. But as soon as you send the mail, it leaves your computer here. And by the time, it, so this is the sender's computer. So it goes through the sender's computer to the recipient or the receiver. But in between the two, there are countless or a lot of service, computer service that sits in between the two communication. But yet the information is sent within a, within a split of a time, okay, a split of seconds, it leaves your machine and pa, it gets to the person's computer. If the person wants to reply instantly, he's also able to reply you at the same minute. So that is the difference between the normal mailing system and electronic mail. So if we are looking at e-business today, okay, if we are looking at e-business today, then we are also talking about a kind of business system that we can do it online. Now, I'm just introducing us to what e-business is all about. So let's see. In a normal business world, if you're in Accra, if you go to Makola or uh, Kantamanto, if you're in Kumasi, you go to KGTI, if you're in Takradi, you go to the Market Square, or I, I think so, I'm sorry, um, Takradi, go to the Market Square, and all those big markets that we are around, Tamale Market and all those markets. If you go there, you find a lot of business people selling their products, okay? Especially the, the our mothers. You hear them calling the name of the product they are selling. Yes, tomatoes. Yes, pineapple. Yes, this. Yes, that. They call you to come and buy from them. And when you buy, you pay you you pay money, and they in, in uh, they they will exchange it with uh, yes uh, the market circle. Okay, then you go to. You pay money and a person will exchange the money with the product that you want to actually procure or you want to buy. So that is how the business world works. So what it means is that if I want to buy anything and I don't go to the market, there is no way I'll be able to buy or get access to the item. If I want to buy anything and I don't go to the markets, it becomes very difficult because the people who sell the products are in the market. So definitely I need to move from the comfort of my home and move to the market so that I'll be able to buy the items. Now, looking at the way today's world operates, we live in a very tight world where our schedules for the day is very, very tight. If our schedules of the day are very tight, what it means is that especially those in Accra will bear witness to what I'm going to say, that sometimes the time to even go out there to go and find something to eat becomes even a problem because of, especially those within the banking sector, because 
you have a lot of customers in the waiting that you need to serve all of them and that they are on your neck. So sometimes your boss will even come to you and say, please, please, I beg you, you squeeze about 30 minutes more for me. And let's, or sometimes they even run a run shift in the eating system. So your colleague will go and eat. And when the person comes back, then you also go and eat. What it means is that if you, that same person, you need to go to the market to maybe you're a married woman, you need, or you're even a single person and you, are, you have to go to the market to buy certain food items to come home and cook with them. What it means is that you might be closing from work around, if you're in the banking sector, you might be closing around 5 p.m., uh, sorry, 4 p.m. for the normal um, um, uh, banking hour, and you do balancing. By the time you are done with balancing, sometimes it's around 8 p.m. or even 9 p.m. And I wonder which woman you go and meet at Cantamanto Market to go and buy tomatoes around that time. So businesses are constrained with time. Okay, there's a, what we call time constraint on businesses. And due to this, that is why there's an introduction of what we call the e-business, electronic business system, where people can trans do the same type of business that they are doing on the electronic platform. So we can give ourselves an example of, let's say, the Jumia, the Glovo, uh, is it the global delivery service? Okay. So currently in Accra, I know a delivery service or a, a company and their main duty is that when you are a worker in the workplace and you are too busy to go out on break or to go to the market to do uh, to buy groceries and all those things, you contact them through their, um, their app. And you, when you call them, maybe you tell them that, okay, I need tomatoes. I need tomatoes. I need uh, pepper, I need fish, I need this. So you quote amount of them that you want to buy, okay? So tomatoes, 20 CDs, pepper, 5 CDs, uh, fish, 50 CDs, and all those things. So you, you make mention of the list of items that you want to buy. And they will go out there and, do, and buy all those things in bulk and bring it to you at wherever you are, whether in the, in the house, in your office, or wherever you find it. So they'll bring it. So when they come, they will charge you for the service that they have rendered, which a lot of people are patronizing their service because it's making, to them, it's making life easy. Then we also have a system like this one, um, the online buying and selling, like the Jumia, like the AliExpress, okay? the Jumia, the AliExpress, the Kiku. We have um, somebody said Tonaton. <laughs> yes, we'll be looking at all of them as we move along, the GG and all those things, yes. So all these online platforms is helping businesses or individuals to be able to transact businesses with people. And today we want to look at the perspective of it. So we are saying that e-business in a broad sense, refers to the transformation of key business processes through the use of the internet technologies, okay? So the focus of this course is to imbibe in students a good understanding of e-business and e-commerce to enable them to implement e-business strategy in the organization in which they work. And we are also saying that it's going to cover the fundamentals of e-business, okay? We'll be looking at the e-business infrastructure, the e-business models, e-procurement, change management, and the implementation of e-business. Then also, we will also come to appreciate, okay, the scope, the entire scope and implication of e-business and e-commerce. And students will also be able to identify some of the opportunities. And this is the main focus of the course. After the course, you should be able to identify certain business opportunities opportunities that exist within the e-business environment and how best you can um, uh, take advantage of it. A lot of you, I can see about 100% of us here on this platform. Currently, I can see 339, 340 students. And I can see on authority that all of us here might be on Facebook. And some of you have, are just there to just make friends and just to enjoy the social life aspect of it. But I can tell you, some people are making millions and millions and millions of CDs, okay? 
out of the, the same Facebook that all of us are using. So we'll be looking at some of the, uh, how to identify e-business opportunities and also to evaluate an organization's current business capabilities, okay? And propose some of the strategies for e-business implementation. Then it will also uh, uh, enable students to appreciate the risk, you see? We have, we have been talking about buying and selling on the internet, buying and selling on the internet. Yes, it's good. But the truth is that there is a high risk associated with doing business online. So we'll be looking at some of the risk and some of the challenges, okay, inherent in e-business adoption. Then the course will also uh, arouse in students an entrepreneurial desire in this time and era where um, we seem to say that uh, the government is telling us that... Uh, there's no job, so we need to be entrepreneurs. This is another avenue for us to be entrepreneurs, to identify some of the opportunities that exist out there. So we'll be uh, arousing in students an entrepreneurial desire to consider setting up their own internet startups. So we'll be looking at some of them. Some of you might even have your own website for blogging, okay? And I'll be teaching you through this course how you can transform this kind of blogging system into a money-making machinery. Okay, so we, after completing this course, students should be able to define the meaning and the scope of e-business and e-commerce. So we'll be drawing the, the line between what is called e-business, okay? We'll be drawing the line between e-business and e-commerce, okay? We'll be drawing a line. And please, let me, let me say this. Um, the class is supposed to end at 4 p.m., but probably will be end around 2 because there's going to be an assignment that you will need to do and, and submit, okay? I'll be giving you, I think, an hour or two, and I'll give you the details and everything very soon, okay? So without, uh, before I forget, I have to, uh, I'll be giving you, there's going to be a practical assignment where you, you do it, a certificate to be issued in your name and you will print and submit it to your, 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 your course rep and it will be submitted to the coordinator and it will be sent down to Kumasi here. So please, um, before we end the, the class today, um, that is going to be our assignment for, today, uh, for this uh, online um, lecture. All right, so we'll be drawing the difference or the line between e-business and e-commerce, okay? Are they the same? Are they different? Um, can they be used interchangeably? So sometimes you hear people talking about e-business. You hear sometimes you hear people talking about e-commerce. So we want to find out, are they the same? Then we will identify why people adapt e-business or e-commerce, okay? The rationale behind e-business adoption or the e-commerce adoption. Then we look at why some industries are still refusing to adapt e-business so identify the barriers that may restrict e-business adoption why looking at the, the various opportunities and the advantage that we get as a result of the uh, using e-business why are st uh, still some industries refusing to use the e-business and e uh, the, the e-business environment then we'll look at something we call the uh, marketplace and market space, okay? We look at marketplace and market space models for electronic e-business transaction, okay? So the marketplace and market space, we're looking at the, the, those two. We will also look at how revenues, okay, are generated out of the e-business or using some of these online platforms or the online services, how revenue can be generated from these online services. Then we will look at different elements of, of an organization, what we call the mi ma macro environments that impact on organization e-business and e, e uh, marketing strategy. So we'll be looking at the macro environment of organization and its micro environments, okay? So we'll be looking at the macro and the micro environments, okay, of an organization that impacts 
on its e-business or e-marketing strategy. Then we'll look at the alternative, okay, strategic approaches to achieving e-business. Alternate approaches in achieving e-business. So this weekend, basically, we want to do, if time will permit us, five units. So we, our unit one is about e introduction to e-business and e-commerce. Unit two is going to be framework for e-business and e-commerce. Then unit three, business and revenue models. That is how we learn how we can use the e-business to make the money or generate the money. Then unit four, we'll be looking at what we call the change management. Then unit five, we'll look at the e-business implementation. Six is about e-business strategy. And uh, that one will be handled in the unit seven, six and seven. Um, I, I, maybe five, six, and seven will be handled in, in the during the face-to-face -face section. But for now, let's see if we can be able to handle unit one up to five for today. Yes, the assignment to be done today online. Okay, don't worry, you understand when when I get to the assignment, Benjamin. Okay. And please, let's take note that this course, we have assignments. If it is a group assignment, it's 10. If it is an individual assignment, like what you are going to do is an individual one. It's going to carry 10% max of your total score. Okay. Then mid sem is going to be 20%. Then end of semester will be 70. So please make sure... And don't forget that when we talk about this kind of assignment, it includes um, um, attendance, okay? Either both the online and the face-to-face, -face, okay? So it includes the online and the face-to-face. -face. So those who are not here, whilst we automatically take attendance on the system, know that it's going against you. All right. So mid term will be 20% and end of semester will be 70%. So please let's take notes of these. Okay. So uh, now let's start the class. We want to look at our unit one, which is section one, which is introduction to e-business and e-commerce. And our first thing that we want to look at today is e-commerce and e-business e-business opportunities, drivers of e-business internet adoption. What is driving people or what is propelling people to use the internet or businesses to use the adopt in internet or to use internet as part of their um, operation or their services. Then also we'll look at some of the risk that are associated with and the barriers to e-business adoption. the risk and barriers to e-business adoption. Then we'll look at the drivers of consumer internet adoption and barriers to consumer internet adoption. So that is, this is going to be our outline for unit one, okay? This is going to be our outline for unit one. Now, as I started introducing you to what e-business is all about, okay? Everything that I keep mentioning about, I keep mentioning or everything that I keep saying is, the internet, the internet, 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 okay? The internet. Now, the question we want to ask ourselves is, what actually is the internet? Some people refer to the internet and they sometimes they say, oh, my internet is slow. Say, your, like as I'm teaching right now, some are saying, say, your internet is slow. Say, your internet is this, say, your network, uh, this and that. And people still don't get it, what the internet is all about. Some people even think the internet is uh, the, what um, the service providers are giving us, either MTN, Vodafone, or all those service providers, what they are giving us. No, that is not the internet. When we talk about the internet, we are saying that it is a worldwide collection of computer networks, okay? So what it means is that your computer, Let me put it this way. Let me use a black pen. So 
your computer, my computer, and all the computers that we have, okay? Assuming all of us are using MTN, okay? So we are connected to MTN. Okay, so your computer, my computer, connecting all of us together to there is a bigger network across the world. Okay, so MTN becomes the one, or we call them the ISP, the Internet Service Providers. They are the people that connect you to that bigger international network. So when you connect yourself or you are using MTN, you are on MTN network. So as soon as MTN connects you, to the international network. The international network is what we call the internet. So if somebody is also, so assuming this is Ghana, okay? Assuming this is, this is Ghana. Don't forget that there are other people also connecting to that same network from, let's say the USA. So somebody will be in the USA and wants to send you an email, okay? When a person sends you the email, it goes through the international network, through MTN system, and the message will get to you, will get to you. So this international network where people are connected all over the world is what we refer to as the internet. Now, the same time on this international network, we have a lot of servers, like the Facebook server, like Facebook, like, uh, let me use a blue pen here. Let me use a blue pen here. We have servers like um, uh, Google. We have Google servers, okay? We have Google servers. All of them are connected. So assuming you are here, okay, Benjamin Bada, assuming you are the one here browsing and you want to send and uh, you want to go on Google, as soon as you type www.google.com, it goes through MTN system, through the international network, and it goes to the Google server. Okay, so this is how the internet looks like. So what it means is that no individual or not a single organization can lay hold or can lay claim or can claim the internet as the bona fide property because you are part of the internet, I'm part of the internet. It is currently, I am streaming a video from my computer and you are able to watch or you're able to see it at the comfort of your home, okay? So I am also contributing a section or a path to the entire internet system. So that is how the internet is all about. So it refers to the physical network that links computers across the globe. It consists of infrastructure of network servers and communication links that is used to hold and transport information between client computers and the web servers. So just like I just explained over here. And we also talk about the World Wide Web. So we, you are typing, a website and you just proceed it with www dot, let's say google.com. Okay. So we are saying that the www is a technique for publishing information on the internet. It is accessed through the web browsers, which display web pages of embedded graphics and HTML. Okay. So if I open my browser and I begin to browse, Okay, and I begin to browse. Uh, let me rather share my screen. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, let me share my screen rather instead of the slides so that you can see. So that you can see over here too. Okay, so assuming I type something like, let's see. Um, www. 
myjoyonline.com. Okay. I'm, I'm requesting to see the MyJoy Online page. So as soon as I type www.myjoy Online, now I have been linked to my Joy Online page and I can read any information or news that I want to read from there. From their page. All right. So that is what I mean. Now let's continue. Please, if you have any question, just type it in the, uh, what do you call it, the comment section. And I'm reading all the chats over there too. So please, if you have any question, don't, don't hesitate. I'm reading all the, uh, the chats over there too. All right. <laughs> now let's look at the internet and business value. How the internet add value to businesses, okay? The internet and business value. We are saying that in today's world, the internet can replace existing distribution channels or extend them. We are all logistics students, so we can, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, um, understand some of these key terms that we are saying, we are, we, we, some of the terms here, distribution channels. Yes, the telcos also have servers. Somebody is asking the difference between web page and website. Um, let me let me explain the web page and the websites to the one who just asked. Okay, so this is my journal online. Okay, so this is a page. Okay, this is a page of my web my journal online. So this is a page. Hospitality students, okay, good. I, I know, I know, don't worry. I'll explain some of the key terms over there. Uh, maybe I'll, Mali, Tete, I'll explain them, don't worry. So this is a page, okay, of my journal online. At the same time, I can go to um, their news page, okay? So this is the news page. So I click on news and I can go to the news page of my journal online. I can go to the entertainment page, okay? So this is entertainment page for my job online. So when you bring when you bring related web pages together, it forms a website. Now you see, I have been to my job online. I have been to their news page. So this is my job online. My joy. Okay, I went to their news page. I went to their entertainment page. I went, I can go to the uh, um, sports page, all still under the same MyJoy Online. So each of these are individual pages, but when you bring all the pages together, it is the web, it becomes the website. So I cannot go and bring a page from um, um, ghanaweb.com. I cannot go and bring a page from ghanaweb.com and add it to my journal and say it's a website. No. So we are saying that the difference between a website and a web page is a web page is an individual page of a particular website. Okay. But when you bring the various pages of a particular website together, okay, that is what we call a website. So the one who asked that question, that is the difference between the two. So um, somebody saying, oh, say we are, we are hospitality student. Okay. Now, Distribution channels, we are saying that the internet can replace existing distribution channels or extend them. Let me use an example of, let's say, Unilever Ghana, okay? Let me use an example of, let's say, Unilever Ghana. So, assuming Unilever Ghana sits up here, hey, I'm not a good art, art, artist, so sometimes my drawings are very bad. So, assuming this is Unilever Ghana, Okay, and we have their, some of their centers in Accra. They have some in Kumasi. They have some in um, Ho. Their, their distribution centers, they have some in Ho. They have, hey, did I write hosts? Sorry. 
my who people forgive me. So who then we have let's say uh Tadi. The Tamale, uh, the central region, central. Okay, so assuming these are their various distribution centers. Okay, now when Lucy, please rename your rename your name in the system instead of typing over there. The system don't take attendance by what you have typed. It takes the attendance by the name you join the class. So rename yourself up, up there. All right, so. These are the various distribution centers. So when they, uh, they, they manufacture their products, they send it to the, these various distribution centers for onward delivery. <laughs> okay, I didn't do technical drawing. And besides to write on the computer screen is also totally different from writing it in the book. So uh, forgive me for not having uh, accurate drive, uh, drawing uh, 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 skills. All right, so these are the various distribution centers. So when they, uh, uh, they manufacture their products, let's say Unilever Ghana, um, or let's say, let me use Nestle. I know of Nestle and their products. Unilever, yes, I know them, but let me use um, either Unilever or Nestle Ghana. Okay, let me just maintain the two. So if it is Nestle, maybe they, 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 they manufacture, after they manufacture their milk and other things, okay? they will now send it to the Accra distribution center, the Kumasi, the whole, the Tadi, the Tamale, the central region, and all the other distribution centers. So these become their permanent distribution center. That is where they send their products to. But if we are talking about um, a company like, let's say, Apple, okay, Apple Music, okay? So gone are the days where we used to um, um, have the cassettes, the CDs, so musicians will do or will finish their music, the, the, the master or the demo or whatever. And what they do is that they put it on a CD. Now, in this current era, the era of CDs and um, the, the, the cassette system is no more. So Apple uses what we call the Apple Music, or we have the Deezer, we have the Deezer, we have the Spotify, the Spotify, we have the Boom Play, the Boom Play system, and all those kind of online system. So, CDs that previously they sh they should be selling to only people within America. So, gone are the days when a musician in America releases his album. Sometimes it takes a longer time before the product will get here for those of us in this part of the world too get access to the music or the cd or the movie but in today's world because of the internet as soon as the movie or the C the music is released the same day we are able to get it here in this part of our world what it means is that wherever music stores that they should have sent the cds to now it is going beyond the borders of assuming this is uh, usa okay and this is no more accra this is let's say ohio this is Washington, D.C. The, the, the Washington, D.C. This is uh, uh, um, Minnesota. This is, uh, 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 how do they call it? Uh, La Vegas. This is Vegas. And so on and so forth. So assuming Apple used to put music on CDs and send it to these various distribution centers for people to go there and buy the CDs from. Now, with the introduction of electronic uh, platform of what we call the, um, the Apple Music, which is an electronic version of it, what it means is that now they are no more selling to people within the American environment. Now, people all over the world, so those of us here in Ghana, Apple is serving us like the way they are serving um, there are people in America, okay? So what we are saying here is that the internet can replace the existing distribution channel. So these channels where they need to, um, Apple, uh, after they receive the album from the musician and they have to send it to these um, centers, now 
they are being replaced with an electronic version of it, okay? So the internet has replaced the existing distribution channels or extend them. So now it has been extended from the various states within America, even to those of us outside America, for us to have access to some of these platforms. Now, the internet started, and it, at that time, it was called ARPANET, okay? It was called ARPANET. Now, let me come back here and finish up something over here. We are saying that the internet enables firms, okay, to interact directly with the consumers and reach a wider audience. So let's see something over here. Um, I, I am, uh, 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 what do you call it? I am an addict of um, um, this website. Uh, what do you call, they call it? Um, Ju um, Jumia. Jumia. Dot, oh, damn. Let me start. Jumia.com.gh. Okay, so let me go to Jumia.com.gh and let's see. Okay. Now, I'm going to use this Jumia to explain something over here. I'm not doing advert for anybody, but it's because it's an e-commerce site, I think we need to. So, assuming I'm searching for shoes, okay? And uh, let me be specific. Men, men. Men shoe, okay? All right. Now, look at something here. I just searched for a particular type of shoes, men's shoes, okay? And you can see over here, this very one, please, can, I hope you can see from my screen. Please, if you can see, just type, I can see. Okay, good, good. So we have shoes over here. And if you look at over here, some of them has, has been indicated as shipped from abroad. The one without ship from abroad means the seller is here in Ghana with us, okay? So all those ones that are going to be sent to you from outside, okay? They have indicated it's shipped from abroad, shipped from abroad, shipped from abroad. And this abroad we are talking about is China. No other place than China, our people, our good friends, okay? So what it means is that all these sellers from China, okay? All these sellers from China, let me um, come back here. So all these sellers from China, so the person is in China and previously, so this is China and people will be buying from the Chinese market from him. So all the provinces in China will be those people who could, who could afford or who could patronize some of these um, 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 products from them. Now, with the introduction of the internet, they are now selling outside the borders of China in the region of, let's say, Ghana. And let's say they sell, they sell as much as to the United States, to the UK, and all the others. Okay. But apart from the internet, okay, without the internet, these companies will be selling only to people within the Chinese environment. So we are saying that internet firms can interact directly with consumers and reach a wider audience. So when I'm buying from somebody on the Jumia platform, okay, when I'm buying something from the Jumia platform, most of the time you can see this type of service with um, AliExpress. Okay, let me go to AliExpress and show you what I'm talking about. Let me go to AliExpress and show you what I'm talking about. When you are buying something from them, most of the time you have you can be able to chat directly with the um, what do you call it, the manufacturer or the supplier. Okay. Um, let me see. Um, I'm looking for men shoes. And I, uh, one thing is that with um, what do you call it, um, um, AliExpress. All of them are not here. They are not here. They are in China. So all of the products, you see them, they will, they will tell you the shipping cost, okay? The shipping fee. 
So assuming I want to buy these slippers, okay, these men's slippers, okay, most of the time you have the liberty to chat with it. So um, let me see where you can, I don't know if they have taken, they have not taken out the, that feature from it. Okay. Uh, um, bye. Let me see. If they have not taken out that uh, feature out of it, I think they have taken it out. But previously, what we used to do is that when you come to their system, they have chats with the supplier. So you can have a chat with the one who is selling the product. And if you have any question that you want to ask, okay, you can be able to ask the supplier whatever thing that you want to know about the product that you want to buy. So what we are saying is that dealing with industries online, it enables the industry or the firm to um, interact directly with the consumer. And also at the same time, they're able to reach a wider audience. So the wider audience means if you are a seller in Ghana here, you are not only dealing with people within the Ghanaian, Ghanaian environment. Okay, somebody saying it's, it's the chat system is now with Alibaba. Yes, I know Alibaba is there, but for AliExpress, those days it used to be there. I don't know if they have taken it out. Okay, thank you very much, Francis Omari. Yes, thank you very much. All right. So some information-based products, such as software, such as music, such as videos, can actually be physically be distributed over the internet. Now, if you go to um, a website like, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, today, I, I think I'm very happy we are using, we are doing an online thing where we can also have internet to um, um, also make, uh, look at some of the things in, uh, so I look at a website like Netflix, okay? I look like a website like netflix.com, okay? Now, if I sign into my Netflix account, uh, uh, okay, I can't show my password whilst I type. Let me take it out of the screen and go and type it somewhere. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm scared. I'm scared of some of you people. So I need to take my. <laughs> oh, gosh. OK. Uh, OK, so um, I've signed into my Netflix. So let's see. All right, so um, I just signed in to my Netflix account and you can see over here, a lot of movies, okay? A lot of movies, series, other things. So assuming there is a movie that is released instantly today, they don't need to bring it to Ghana before I can get to watch the movie, okay? As soon as they are released, Instantly, instantly, I can also be watching the movie here in Ghana. So what we are saying here is that some information-based products such as software, music, videos can actually be physically be distributed over the internet, okay? So if you, if you have subscribed to the Netflix service, okay, or if you have subscribed to a Netflix service, what it means is that as soon as anything is released, you don't need to wait for days or months or weeks before it can get to you here. But as soon as it's been released, you can also get access to it because of the internet that is available to all of us, okay? So this movie, for instance, I can look at a lot of information about it, okay? I think it's a series. Uh, whether it's a movie or a series, okay? So I can read some a little bit information about it. And if I want to watch, I just go ahead and watch. All right, All right. please, we are not watching movies. <laughs> Those who are making... Those who are, who are mentioning names of movies, please. We are doing e-business and we mean business too. 
So let's mean business here. All right. Okay. So internet technology is also helping uh, companies to radically reduce their transaction costs. Okay. When we talk about transaction costs, we are referring to all the costs that an organization will incur in the course of transacting business or performing their business activity. So we can talk about marketing, advertisement, um, 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 distributions, uh, uh, cost, and all those things. Every cost that the organization will need to incur in order to um, 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 do business out there is part of the transaction cost. All right. So what we are saying is that the companies can use using the internet. It's helping companies to radically reduce their transaction costs. So currently, if I don't know if there's anybody here working in an FM station or a TV station. Is there anybody working in an FM station or a TV station? Please, if you're here, can you kindly let me know you work in an FM station or a TV station? You want to, you want to find out something? Anybody in the chat, please, if you are, just go to the chat and let me see. Is anybody here working in an FM station or a TV station? All right, okay. If nobody's owning up, let's, let's, let's just continue. What I just wanted to find out is how much it costs to do an advertisement at the FM station for the 15, uh, the, 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 one, the one minute adverts and the 30 seconds advert on the TV. The one minute and the 30 seconds, the, the one minute on uh, radio and the 30 seconds on TV. This is very, 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 very expensive to run an advert on a radio continuously for one week. Very expensive. For TV, don't go there. <laughs> Somebody say we are all unemployed nationals of IMF. <laughs> uh okay so what i'm trying to say is that it's very expensive okay it's very very, very expensive to do adverts on a tv or a radio station so because of this if an organization has if you have a website okay and you post all your adverts there now let me show you something here like my job online for instance if you go to my job online, we go there to read news, but look at how other in companies are making use of the place. Okay. So my job online is showing adverts from GRE. They are showing adverts. They have given access to certain adverts we played on their site from Jumia, adverts from, um, and a whole lot. Okay. Adverts from Jumia and other things. Okay. So you see your tax GRA is advertising over here and other things. If you go to a website like, um, um, how do they call it? Uh, Ghana Web. Let's see Ghana Web too. How they also use their website for advertisements. So ghanaweb.com. Okay. All right. So ghanaweb.com too, you see up here, Somebody is also doing adverts here. And if you have money, they are selling two bedroom or three bedroom apartments with a competitive prices. So the cash more are among us. So over here today, I've also allowed AliExpress adverts on their page. Okay. They have other adverts. Okay. The shark, the sports check, and the bloggers, other things. Okay. So all these websites make use of these kind of services to make money. Okay. So Businesses, instead of spending huge sums of money, can use their website to advertise their products. Okay, so some of these costs will be reduced. Then agency costs, the people who will have to represent you in the business world. So like I use Apple Music, for example, all those shops who will take their Apple Music and sell on behalf of Apple, Apple needs to pay those shops. But if Apple will just host the product on their website and people are picking directly from Apple, then what it means is that those agents will no more be paid or there will not be any need for the, the, the what do you call it, the agents, and that Apple will be dealing directly with their consumers. And all those costs that they are supposed to pay the agents, 
okay, will now be taken away and that Apple will now get a lot of profits, okay? And you see, in the business world, it is not always increasing the cost of your products, okay? That will amount to profit. Sometimes re reducing some of the transaction costs and agency costs also becomes a profit to their organization. All right, so let's continue. <laughs> So the internet started somewhere in 1969, 1969, and at that time it was called ARPANET. And the internet has developed over the years, okay? Over the years, we got to the time of Web 1.0, Web 2.0, and currently in 2022, we are in Web, Web 5.0, okay? We are in Web 5.0, and the internet in today's world is more intelligent, okay? more and more intelligent when i say the internet is more intelligent let me show you what i mean if i go to let's say like um google.com okay if i go to, uh, to a website like google if i go to a website like google.com now look at something over here I am going to search for, let's say, men clothes. Men. As soon as I type men, no, I've not even finished what I'm, I'm typing, but have you seen it's trying to suggest other things for me? Menstrual cycle, mention, menstrual, meningitis. As soon as I give space, it's trying to suggest movies. So if I type C, men chain, men cologne, men whatever, what, uh, uh, Conroe style, clothing, and all the others. So the internet is more and more becoming more and more intelligent. That is why we say intelligent. So the internet has now been built with what we call that AI system, the artificial intelligence system, where the internet, you are able to most of the time see, um, um, it's able to uh, predict what you are likely to look for. So those of you who go on Facebook and you enjoy watching videos of um, um, or pictures of cloth, okay, you enjoy watching pictures of cloth, um, uh, shoes, and all the others, you realize that most of the time when you're watching a video and the advert pause, okay, and the video pause for that five seconds or 10 second advert, all the advert that you will see will be something related to cloth, cloth, cloth shoes and all the others because most of the time when you go online those are some of the things you usually go there to search so the internet is more and more becoming more intelligent and it's able to check some of the things that you are most con uh, constantly searching for whenever you go online so that is why we said it is growing from normal being a file system to what we call the web intelligence system okay and the internet is now built with the ai system so if you have heard of the phrase, the internet doesn't forget, that is what it means. The internet is now sophisticated to the standards. It doesn't forget anything. And it anything that you do, it tries to keep records of everything that you do on the internet. Okay, let's continue. I've spent, I think I've spent enough time on this ch uh, chapter, but let's continue. Now, I want to look at two things over here. I want to talk about something we call the intranet and the extranet, okay? I'm looking at the intranet here and I'm looking at the extranet. Let me explain the two. When we talk about intranet, I'm going to use an example to explain what the intranet is. And I'll use that same example to link up with extranet. Now, let me use an organization like Melcom. Let me use an, as an, as an, an organization like Melcom, for example. If you go to, if you have ever been to Melcom, okay, and you buy something from Melcom, at the end of the day, you take it to the cashier or the checkout point or the salesperson for the item to be, um, to be sold to you or they will enter it on their computer system, okay? Now, let me put it this way. Let me do it this way. So this is Teller 1, this is Teller 2, 
and this is Tela 3. Okay, so you go to Melcom and you go and buy something from Melcom. What it happens is that at the end of the day, you take it to one of these tellers or the, these, um, 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 what do you call it, uh, sales people for them to key it on their system before you can make payments. Now, all of them are connected to a single database. Okay, they are all connected to a single database. So if it is a bottle of water that you pick to, to, to buy, and you send it to Teller One, okay, and the item is, let's say, two CDs. There is no way you send it to Teller Two and the Teller Two will tell you it's three CDs. It is never possible unless the person wants to cheat you because they are all connected to this, a single database, okay? So whenever we talk about an intranet, we are referring to a private network within a single company that uses the internet standard to enable employees to assess or share information among themselves. So within the Melcom Center, they have their internal network, okay, where all the tellers are connected together and they share the same kind of resources. Now, if you have been to 